part five. We moved into a Mexican-American barrio in East Los Angeles where we found a new rhythm that suited us. During incarceration, news had traveled slowly. We only had heard rumors and whispers of gossip to provide us information from the outside. It was in East LA that we received an unexpected letter from my grandmother informing us of the very happy news that she had miraculously survived the bombing of Hiroshima. However, it wasn't all good news. We received another letter from our grandmother some weeks later informing us about my aunt Ayako and cousin's death. She apparently didn't want to give us the bad news with the good. Ayako and her little boy's body were found in one of the mini canals in Hiroshima. It appeared the bodies had caught fire and they had thrown themselves into the canal where they perished. Although we were getting our lives back on track, the war's effects continued to take their tragic toll on us. I began attending elementary school in East Los Angeles, just your average American kid. But not everyone saw it that way. My fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Rugen, had a chilly air about her, particularly towards me. Yes, Maria Whenever I raised my hand, she'd look the other way. Carlos. During recess, she had the opposite of in inattentive and would watch me like a hawk. One day, I heard her say something about that cut like a knife. That little Jap boy. That painful word tore open a wound, wound filled with shame. How mean. For reasons unknown, Mrs. Ribbon spewed out all her hate on me her student, and I hated her in return. Class, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I had an unsettling feeling that her calling me Jap Boy had something to do with our time in camp. I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the public. It was an old, I was old enough by then that I understood that the camp was like jail, but could not fully grasp what had been done and why we'd been sent there. The guilt which surrounded our internment made me feel like I deserved to be called that nasty word. And liberty and justice for all? As a teenager, I became curious about internment camps. I searched all my civic books and history books, but there was nothing about the internment of Japanese Americans. As I studied civics and government in school, I ca it came to see that internment as an assault, not only upon our entire group of Americans, but on our constitution itself. How is guaranteeing of due process and equal protection, how had that been decimated by the forces of fear and prejudice unleashed by politicians? I couldn't reconcile what I read in these books about the shining ideals of our democracy with what I knew of my childhood imprisonment. I had to learn about the internment from my father during our after dinner conversations. That remains part of the problem that we did not know the unpleasant aspects of American history. We are forced to sleep in a horse stall for several months, and therefore we don't learn the lessons that these chapters have to teach us. So we repeat them over and over. As I got older, I stopped to think, what made Mrs. Rugen hate me so much? Maybe she'd had a husband in the Pacific Theater or a son, and I looked like the people who'd fought her family member. Despite the fact that we were Americans, we were still seen as the enemy. A few years later, I enrolled at UCLA, studying theater and training to become an actor. So when the opportunity presented itself to join the cast of an original musical, which shined a light on the political and social injustice of the time, it was too important to, fly, to pass up. Fly Blackbird opened to thunderous ovations, capturing the optimism of the times. During the nearly year-long run, the musical had profound effect on the countless audience members. It spread a message of positive change and a hope for a common future. I met so many amazing, like-minded people during the course of that show. One such person I met backstage after production was a fellow performer I would eventually become permanently linked to. Hello, I'm Nicole Nichols. Congratulations on the show. Thank you for coming, Nicole. And Nichelle, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. 1961. One of the most unforgettable encounters would come as a result of my fly blackbird. We were often asked to perform songs from the direction at various rallies. Please join me in welcoming Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I would like to discuss with you the American dream. 
It is a dream of land where men of all races, nationalities, and all creeds can live together as brothers. On the one hand, we have proudly professed the principles of democracy, but on the other hand, we have sadly practiced the very opposite of those principles. Now more than ever, America is challenged to bring that noble dream into reality. It was, I was spellbound by Dr. King's words and those uh, that resonated so deeply with me. And those who are working to implement the American dream are the true saviors of our democracy. Not only as an American, but as a theater performer, Dr. King using nothing more than the power of his voice to captivate the entire arena. Afterwards, the whole cast was taken to meet Dr. King. During our brief encounter, he spoke to me with words that stay with me to this day. Thank you so much for your contribution to the afternoon. You were wonderful. It was an honor. Thank you very much. Not only meeting Dr. King and shaking his hand, but also marching with him in the streets of Los Angeles was an unforgettable experience. But the seeds for my activism were planted much earlier by my father. Our democracy is a participatory democracy. Essentially, it's dependent on people who cherish the highest ideals of our democracy and actively engage in the political process. In fact, I'll show you how it works. That afternoon, we went downtown for the Adali Stevenson for President headquarters. You see, George, this is democracy in action. In America, anybody can be president. That's one of the risks you take. I saw him speak several times. He was an eloquent man. One day, a whispered excitement swept across the campaign headquarters. She's coming. Is it really true? Everybody line up straight. No funny business. He's looking. Who's, who's on their way? Good, good, good. All clear. Friends, please let me introduce Eleanor Roosevelt. It's so nice to meet you. She went down the row and shook hands. Thank you, George, for helping Adelie. She knows my name. I was on cloud nine. It took me a moment to remember the na name tag I was wearing. If anything was missing that day, it was my father. Earlier that day, when Mr. Stevenson is president, do you think he has to get voted into office first, George? They say that he'll be here in two hours. I don't feel well. I should get some rest. Do you need anything? No. You stay here and keep helping Adla. I'll be okay. I hope you feel better. I have some news, everyone. Let's bring it in. Not long after Dad left, we got the news that Mrs. Roosevelt was coming. It wasn't until later that I realized what had happened that day. My father was not sick. He did not want to shake hands with the woman whose husband had imprisoned his family. After Fly Blackboard, I found m more guest roles in Hollywood. Playhouse 90, The Twilight Zone. I was fortunate to find many opportunities, though with many of them, nationality played a big role. You were too quick to be bullied by authority. That is not the American way. Americans are not afraid of the police. Mission Impossible. None would change my life quite like meeting the meeting I had with RKO Studios, long since rechristened Desmu Studios. My agent had gotten me a meeting with, about filming a plot for a series, not just a one-off, but steady work. It was called The I Love Lucy Show. Two actors that once worked on the very lot as hired talent, one an immigrant from Cuba, now owned the whole thing. I knew that anything could happen in this unpredictable business. Hello, may I help you? I'm George Takei. Here is, I'm here to see Mr. Rosenberry. Have a seat. I remember thinking, oh great, I really started off great that I mispronounced his name. Every smile or glancing from the receptionist left, left me more unnerved. I started to realize how life-changing being cast in a series could be. There was a lot of tense smiles exchanged and then the buzzer. He can see you now. Hi, I'm Jean. Why don't you sit over there? Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, no, not at all. After some pleasant conversation, including the correct pronunciation of my own name, I liked the man and his spontaneous, unaffected manner. He was comfortable, which I was unlike a producer I've ever met. It's the 23rd century aboard a huge spaceship, a spaceship, Earth. The character's name is Sulu. He's a bright young science officer. He has to be a Pan-Asian heritage to represent that huge part of the world. Hollywood and television had a long history of unflattering stereotypical depictions of Asian men. He'll be a strong, sharp, and likable character. 
as buffoons and, and menaces, but this role would be different. Believe me, he will be an officer carrying his weight on the ship. Jean sheepishly apologized for this legacy and offered me the best opportunity I'd ever had. Fred, what's the series anyways? Believe it or not, until that moment, I thought to ask, I hadn't thought to ask anyone the name of the show. It'll be called Star Trek, even though it could be my shot at a real success. As we left the Hamburg Hamlet that afternoon, I did something unusual. I dropped the cool facade that protects our egos in the profession. I've got to have that role. I desperately want that role. Something as far out as space thing is really a risk. I want that role. I want that role. I kept telling myself, you're going to get that role. As Lieutenant Haraku Sulu, I had the chance to represent my Asian heritage with honor to millions of viewers on television and six times on the silver screen as Lieutenant Commander Sulu, eventually reaching the rank of captain. Stargate 25, 21.6 captain's log. But most importantly, my unexpected notoriety has allowed me to platform from which I can address social causes that need attention. New York City, 2015. I started alongside a talented cast, primarily Asian performers, including the extraordinary Leah San Lagona, to bring the story of the internment to a wider audience. The movie was called A Musical, and it was called Allegiance on Broadway. During the run, the musical was seen by just over 120,000 people, roughly the same number of Japanese Americans who were incarcerated. One evening after performance, I had a surprise visit by a particular member from my past. Hello, George. My name is Florence. I was your father's secretary in Rauer. My daughter flew me out here to see your show. How wonderful to see you again. I hope you enjoyed the show very much. Florence, this is my husband, Brad. So nice to meet you, Brad. Your husband was such a rascal as a little boy. 2017, in, in, 1990, in 1988, the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, on behalf of the United States government, apologized for the grave mistake and signed an act granting internees a $20,000 compensation. In 1981, uh, to build pressure on Washington, I was proud to join the hundreds of people who testified. Over 40 years after we had been incarcerated, Japanese Americans had been elected to Congress and many other high offices. The legislation I'm about to sign provides a re... a restitution payment to each of the 60,000 surviving Japanese who were detained or relocated, yet no payment can make up for the lost years. It was not until 1981 that I received a letter of apology with a check for $20,000 signed by George H. George W. Bush. As my father would say, the wheels of democracy turn slowly. I went on to donate the money to founding the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles. It was a disastrous depression that Roosevelt pulled us out of. It took that man and his determination and creative energy to establish those programs and lift us out of their country. But we were driving here today. I thought I'm going to go home to the man who I'm going to go to the man who imprisoned me. And now I'm here in his home. Only that could happen in America. I talk openly uh, and kindly, and I don't know if this has happened anywhere else, but it remains, reminds me of something my father used to say. Of all the forms of government that we have, American democracy is the best. After all we went through, losing everything you and mama worked for, how can you say that? Roosevelt pulled us out of the depression. He did great things, but he was also a fallible human being, and he did a disastrous mistake that affected us. But despite all that, our democracy is still the best in the world. Because it's a people's democracy, and the people can do great things. Thinking about it now, it was one of those after-dinner talks with my father that informed me so much of my worldwide view and instilled in me the desire to share my story with as many people as possible. I went on radio shows. And then in January 2008, America has carried on, not simply because of the skill or vision of those in high office, but because we, the people, remain faithful to the ideals. And while in my lifetime I've come to see the ideals he taught embrace with conviction, and our outrages have resurfaced with brutal results. These are kids being detained at the border. Same thing. 
Utah, 23-year-old Fred spent the winter of 1942 in this Topaz Relocation Center. Born and raised in Oakland, he had refused the government's relocation orders and he lost his court case. He was just beginning to appeal, an appeal he eventually lost in the Supreme Court. Gordon fared similarly with their appeals. Everyone else uh, uh, fared similarly with their appeals. 1944. Korematsu was not excluded from the military era because of his hostility to him or his race. He was excluded because we are at war with Japan. Japan. These rulings, which found executive order to be constitutional, were never officially overturned by the Supreme Court. So it happened here, and now it's happening to people who look like this. In 2018, Trump versus Hawaii. Until June 2018... Breaking news. Kamasu was gravely wrong on the day it was decided, rules the Supreme Court. Justice Roberts' statement has no place in law and order under the Constitution. But in a cruel irony, the court struck down as a mere side note in Trump versus Hawaii. The very same ruling that upheld President Trump's ban on immigration for Muslim countries. We are unable to process your request. You are banned from entering America against the abomination in this abomination, Justice Sonia Sotomayor was a voice of dissent. Today, the court takes an important step of finally overruling Korematsu, but to sanction a discriminatory policy motivated by animosity towards a disfavored group, the court re uh, the court redeploys the same <laughs> dangerous logic underlying of what we did to our Japanese Americans and merely replaces one gravely wrong decision for another. Your father would be so proud. I got my star on the Walk of Fame. To sharing my life's journey in an exhibit and being nearly everything I accomplished was because of my father. The history can't be a sword to justify injustice or a shield against progress. My liberty depends on us being free too, but must be a manual for how to avoid repeating the mistakes of the past.